Some people may have wondered throughout their life if there are actually more than one type of carnivorous plant. Many people are only exposed to the Venus flytrap. So today we will talk about the nine different types of the most well-known carnivorous plants and discuss them in a little bit of detail. So a goal of running this channel of mine is to actually educate people on carnivorous plants. So when I was young, I was always exposed to the Venus flytrap. We see it on TV shows. We heard about it growing up from our peers saying that if we got into the jungle, a big Venus flytrap's gonna eat us or something. And we were also told about how there's a plant that actually eats animals. So that's something in a child's mind that's amazing. But the thing is most people, they don't think anything more of it. They just think, oh, there's only one plant. But it's actually quite mind opening to realize that there's more than one, there's more than five, there's more than nine even. But today we will only talk about the nine most well-known carnivorous plants. Firstly, we will start off with the most popular carnivorous plant, the Venus flytrap, or otherwise known as the Onia muscupula. This plant is well known for having a closing mouth on which it actually captures its prey. When an insect goes into the mouth, it triggers one of the three hairs on each side of the mouth. It has to touch one of these hairs at least one, one of them at least twice or at least two of them separately within a 20 second time frame. Once that occurs, then an action potential runs through the leaf and causes the leaf's outer cells to grow and close around the insect. Now when the plant wants to open back up, it doesn't shrink the cells on the outside, it just grows the cells on the inside again, making it open like this. So it isn't hinging, it's growing. So that's how the Venus flytrap actually closes. The second most well-known carnivorous plant is the Drosera, or commonly known as the Sundew. This plant has a long, well sometimes it has a long leaf or other times small spoon-shaped leaves. It depends on the type of Drosera you have, there are so many different types. But the structure of the trapping mechanism is the same. There's a leaf with hair sticking out and a sticky globule at the end of that structure. That sticky globule causes insects to be attracted towards the shiny, beautiful looking nectar on this plant. And when the insect lands on top of the sticky substance, they get stuck, obviously, and then they start eating it. And without realizing that they kind of digesting themselves from the outside in by eating these substances, right? So when they decide that it's time for them to leave, they start struggling because they're stuck now. And then that movement on the leaves, on the structures on top of the leaves, causes another action potential within the leaf, causing the leaf to grow towards the insect and encapsulate it. The Drosera are actually one of the most beautiful carnivorous plants in my opinion. They're one of my favorites. Even though I'm probably gonna say that for all of the carnivorous plants, they're all one of my favorites, but I really do enjoy growing Drosera. If you can get the conditions right, they're really easy to grow and they're really really beautiful to look at as. The third most well-known carnivorous plant is the Nepenthes, or otherwise known as the tropical pitcher plant. Now this plant is very unique in that it grows in jungles. People usually think that Venus flytraps grow in jungles, but it's further from the truth. Venus flytraps grow in swamp marshlands, like in North and South Carolina. The Nepenthes, however, grows in tropical forests, such as in Malaysia or Borneo. The way that the Nepenthes actually catches its insects is that it has a, a leaf. Okay, as do all plants, they have a leaf. And at the bottom end of the leaf, there's a tendril that grows out of it. And at the end of the tendril, a pitcher starts to grow. And the pitcher grows up and pops open and makes a lid on top of a pitcher, right? And inside of the pitcher, it secretes enzymes. The enzymes which actually break down any insect that may fall inside of the pitcher. So on the top of the lid, it secretes nectar, nectar that many insects are attracted to. And in some cases, even rodents like shrews, which are well known to be part of the Nepenthes nutrient makeup in some of the forests in the world. So once the, the insect or mammal has defecated or the insect fallen into the pitcher, they struggle, they drown, they decompose and get absorbed by the pitcher plant. It's a really, really pretty plant. If you have never seen one before, look at the video that I'm showing you right now. The fourth most well-known carnivorous plant, plant, plant is the Saracenia or otherwise known as the American pitcher plant. The Saracenia forms tall, beautiful looking funnel-shaped traps. 
The way that the trap works is that at the lid of the trap, the lid secretes nectar, which attracts insects. The insects go to the nectar, they start eating it because, it, you know, it tastes good. They essentially become drunk, you know, taste good, have a good time, and then they fall inside of the pit and they die, basically. They can't get back out because inside of the trap, inside of the funnel, there's downward pointing hairs. These downward pointing hairs prevent the insect from walking back up the pitcher to escape. Saracenians are very efficient at actually catching insects. If you've ever seen a video of them online, you will see that they get packed to the top full of insects. It's, it's insane. The fifth most well-known carnivorous plant is the Heliamphora, or otherwise known as the sun pitcher. Now this plant is very unique. It comes from the Venezuelan mountain tops and the Heliamphora is very similar to the other pitcher plants that we have discussed. Its leaf is basically rolled up with a little nectar spoon at the top. The nectar spoon secretes nectar and causes the insects to be attracted towards that nectar. The insects taste the nectar and they fall inside of the pool of enzymes. The interesting thing about Heliamphora is that they do not actually secrete enzymes inside of their pool of digestive fluids. The bacteria inside of the digestive fluids breaks down the insects and releases nutrients which the Heliamphora then absorbs. The Heliamphora is very interesting as they create beautiful pitches, sometimes very big pitches, pitches that are this big sometimes. A very fun plant to grow, it's very beautiful as well and you can actually watch the insect struggling on the top and fall into the pitcher. So it's very interesting to watch how it actually works. The sixth most well-known carnivorous plant is the Darlingtonia californica or otherwise known as the cobra lily. This plant is very, very unique. It is very similar in structure to the Saracenia, but now instead of forming an open lid, it forms a bulb. This bulb is closed except for an opening at the bottom where two tongue-like looking protrusions stick out of the plant. Now, if you can imagine this, there's two little tongue-like protrusions sticking out of the bulb, which makes it look like a snake, which is why they're called the cobra lily. Now those protrusions, they secrete nectar. This causes bugs to be attracted towards the cobra lily and climb inside a little hole. The bug then tastes all the nectar, gets a little bit drunk, has a good time. And when they decide it's time to leave, they fly, they fly up, they fly out, they fly away because the Darlingtonia has little white windows on the top of the bulb. Now the insect doesn't know that these are windows. The insect thinks that this is a way out. So the insect flies, hits the window, and because it's drunk, it falls over. And eventually the insect does that so many times that it hits a window and falls down the tube of the cobra lily. And once again, it gets stuck inside there, just like it would in the Saracenia. The seventh most well-known carnivorous plant is the Cephalotus. The Cephalotus is native to Australia, it is one of a kind pitcher plants in that there are no other types of this pitcher plant around. It evolved all by itself. The Cephalotus makes small tubby traps about this big on big adults and the interesting thing about this is that its peristome, which is the lid of the trap, has very big ridges. Now the ridges, they have teeth that point inwards into the actual trap. So when an insect comes along, generally ants, it will feed on the nectar and try to go inside to get some more nectar. You know, it's a little bit drunk as all of the other insects are. It falls inside and tries to walk back out, but because there are teeth pointing downwards, the insect can't actually grab onto these ribs and try to get out. So the insect just continues to struggle and eventually loses all its energy and dies inside of the pool of enzyme. Now the eighth most well-known carnivorous plant. The Utricularia is very unique. It forms little bulbs underground or in water. And the bulbs are very similar to the Venus flytrap. The bulbs, they excrete all the water inside of the trap. And when an insect comes and triggers it, it opens up, causing the insect to be sucked or the larvae to be sucked into the trap. The trap then closes behind it and slowly pumps out all that extra water until there's only the insect or larvae inside. Then the trap starts releasing enzymes, which will then digest the prey while still alive. The Trichularia are also known to have very beautiful flowers. Sometimes you'll see the little leaves sticking out of your carnivorous plant pot and you wonder, is this grass or something? But no, it's actually Utricularia. If you let it grow for a full season, eventually they'll make little flowers, little white flowers, yellow flowers, pink flowers, green flowers, any kind of color you can even think of. There's Utricularia for all the different colors. It's really beautiful, especially when you have a pot 
and they flower all at the same time and the whole pot just becomes one color. Now the last, the ninth most well-known carnivorous plant is the Pinguicula. Now the Pinguicula is also known as the Butterwort. The Pinguicula is very similar to the Drosera in that it has a sticky leaves, but the structure of the stickiness to the leaves is different. Whereas a Drosera would have a leaf with a structure and a bulb of sticking, stickiness on top, the Pinguicula actually has a leaf and then sticky droplets on top of the leaf. Now the specific that each of these carnivorous plants are also different. A sundew maybe targets flies, mosquitoes, anything that can really fly onto it really. Whereas a pinguicula targets mainly fungus gnats or small mosquitoes or midges, small insects that are not strong enough to actually walk off of the leaf if it does get stuck. When an insect lands on the leaf, it gets stuck and eventually struggles and dies. And while the insect is struggling, the pinguicula releases enzymes and digests the insect while alive. So guys, if you found this video interesting, please consider giving us a like and a subscribe because every week I release educational content about carnivorous plants and ways in which I can help you grow your carnivorous plants and grow your collection. Thanks guys, see you next time.